What's going on, guys? Brian Jackson from Men's Comics. I want to thank you for letting us kick off your week. That's right, Monday night premiering 9 p.m. We thank everyone that's in the live chat right now. And we are back with another top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for, right? That's right. Again, this is not the hot list, not the top list. These are back issues that we see as potential books to spike in the coming months, coming years, with a focus on long term. Um, these are books that we think are undervalued, underpriced, or books overlooked by the general public. So again, this is our 20th episode, our 20th list um, of this type. This is volume two, episode 10. So that means another ebook is coming. So stay tuned to Simple Men's Comics. And right here on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel, where we will make an announcement in the coming weeks about volume two. Yeah, we like this. This is, this is a growing list that we create because we often get asked through DMs, through comments, through messages, even in person. Hey, what books are you guys looking for right now? So this is one we put out each and every week. These are the books we're hunting. This doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy them. We always say, buy what you like. But this answers that question, and we're counting it down right now, starting with number 10. Coming at the bottom of the list at number 10 this week, we have that Marvel Point One from 2014. Why do we have this one on the list? Well, Miss Marvel, we know a series is coming to Disney Plus, Red Hot. This is one of the original, the OGs of controversial first appearances. You're never going to get people to agree on what is the book to get, but this has kind of become the book that most people really gravitate towards and kind of recognize as the first appearance. Certainly a large print run on these point one books. And uh, if you were around in comics back then, you know the whole fiasco with so many of them ending up in those five below discount packs. Um, but this is a book that goes kind of like ebbs and flows in the market. It's 20, hits 40, drops to 10. You find them for five. They're all over the place. Um, I certainly wouldn't advocate big money right now. If you, I'd, I'd be very kind of cautious and try to find those cheapest possible copies. Second print is a lot tougher of a find. There's a one in 75 incentive for the book. So certainly some people are chasing those incentives, but I don't think you're going to find that cheap. I think that's going to continue to escalate in price. But I think cover A, first print, it's, it's a book that, you probably only got a limited window before these things start to kind of take off and hit that next level as we get closer and closer to that Miss Marvel Disney Plus series. And then coming at the number nine spot, these are some books that we also talked about on our three up, three down. That's hot and cold comic market trends. But at number nine, we have that 2010 Green Hornet number one from that Kevin Smith series, right? That's right. Really unique uh, situation here as... Um, we know that a animated series is coming from Kevin Smith. Uh, they're looking for a streaming home, um, but certainly with what he's got going on with Masters of the Universe, I think we're going to end up seeing an announcement for that in, in the coming weeks to months. Um, it's going to be based on his 2010 Dynamite Green Hornet series, which was originally based on his Green Hornet movie script, which featured kind of an aged up Green Hornet story, which had kind of the, the son of Britt Reed and the daughter of Cato taking the roles as the Green Hornet and Cato. Um, and the series got really kind of critical acclaim uh, for kind of reader buzz, excellent covers. And the first issue we're talking about here in the number nine slot is issue number one. And the reason why this is kind of a messy first appearance situation is on the cover of issue number one, you get both the son and the daughter featured in costume right on the cover. Um, but only the son, Reed's son, appears within the interior pages of the book, and he does not appear as the Green Hornet. So you get the first appearance of him not in costume, and you do not get Cato's daughter at all. But again, both appear characters appear in costume on the cover. So it kind of depends on your valuation of a first appearance. Does a cover appearance count? That's something to let us know in the comment section uh, below. There's a great J. Scott Campbell variant for this that gets a lot of attention. There is a dynamic forces of that J. Scott Campbell that has like the pen and ink style that's awesome. There's a C2E2 kind of black and white of that J. Scott Campbell. Um, regular cover by Alex Ross. Definite popular book. But if that book's not for you because you're like, you know what, nobody's in costume. Um, there's no Cato's uh, daughter. Maybe that's what you're into. Then you can go to issue number two. Issue number two is, is again, like you see with a lot of uh, books, and that's coming at our A spot. 
Issue number two, you're going to have a drop off in print run, a significant drop off in print run. Um, and so that book is a lot scarcer or tougher to find than issue number one. Issue number two features the first appearance of Mulan Kato, who is Kato's daughter. Um, she is not in costume, though, yet in this book. So now with one, you get the first appearance of Britt Reed's son. And, and two, you get the first appearance of Kato's daughter, but neither in costume. So both books, I think, are valid and good um, investments, good books to buy, especially if you can grab them for cover price. But either way, uh, maybe not fully what you're looking for. So coming in at the number seven spot, we're talking about issue number four from this 2010 Green Hornet series. Here, interior within the story, you get a full-on first appearance it's in costume of both the Green Hornet and Kato. Um, and when we look at character first appearances, traditionally, the character in costume is the first appearance that is desired because you're not buying into Mulan Kato as Kato um, until she actually is Kato. Uh, prior to that, it, it's, a, it's kind of a separate thing. Think Cletus Cassidy and Carnage. Um, so I think number four is probably the book to get. There is a, a Alex Ross cover A, an Alex Ross RRP 1 in 25 variant, um, F, uh, different cover B, cover C type books to be on the lookout for there. But I think that these books are going to spike. They're still cheap. They're seeing like a lot of sales on eBay. So you're seeing like thousand percent increases if you check the key collector app on these books. But you're still seeing some very, very cheap and affordable books. And if you look around... These litter dollar bins everywhere in comics. So get on the hunt for these because I think this is a good long-term play. So we are coming in at midpoint on the list this week, and it's so good that I had to get a costume change going. That's right, switched out my hats. But we are talking about Sandman number 22. That's right. Sandman has been kind of the secret talk of the comic industry in the last couple of months, sneaking up on people really with the James McAvoy um, audio, really kind of a groundbreaking thing that we've seen like vault comics do. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if audio can take off within the world of kind of graphic novel publishing, which is definitely something that is very visually based. Um, but we've also got the impending Netflix series coming from Sandman and then the upcoming crossover within the publishing world between Sandman and Lock and Key. Now, we talked about Sandman number one on this list in a previous volume. And we talked about just yeah, at that time, you know, kind of undervalued and really kind of slept on. Always a classic key. Yeah, pop but it's a staple. Yeah, yeah. It's But it's a book that when I first got into comics, Brian, I saw on everyone's wall. And now I'm seeing in people's boxes. So there has been kind of a, a downgraded view of it. Um, but I've always kind of felt like this book, 22, is the, really the sleeper of that series because Morpheus kind of leads that story up until a certain point. And then it really is about Daniel, uh, the Endless. And he first appears in this issue 22. And it, much lower printed, much tougher to find book. And you know what else is the great thing, Brian? You get a double first appearance with this issue because if you also if you're into like the lucifer television series on um netflix you may like or be familiar with at least the character of maze or mazakin uh who also first appears right here i think lucifer is a property with some long-term ability we know that lucifer may show up and say a justice League dark movie or something like that um and i think that we're going to see a lot more from Sandman coming. Certainly could end up seeing uh, Daniel the Endless in the Sandman series on Netflix. Um, and definitely it seems like Sandman is coming back with the publishing arm of DC Comics. So I, I like this book. I think this book is undervalued and it's kind of one to pay attention to. And of course, no top 10 back at your list would be complete on this channel if we didn't talk about one of our beloved 80s franchises and we're talking about gi joe origins number one totally overlooked series here brian this is uh another one that cover a and cover b on this are dollar bin fodder that you know that this book is old when you get the old idw light bulb logo in the left hand corner of a book but so this was one of the original gi joe kind of spin-off series telling origin stories of different characters um there is a one in 25 incentive for issue number one it's a dave dorman variant 
awesome, amazing looking variant, also very tough to find, um, but not expensive. If you do find it, I think there's a few copies on eBay that are uh, pretty affordable. But why are we talking about this G.I. Joe origin series? Well, you know I'm a big G.I. Joe fan. You know we pay attention to this stuff. But a lot of people are overlooking some of this. And one of the things that's kind of come out in the last couple of months is the logo of the upcoming Snake Eyes solo movie. It says Snake Eyes and has that traditional kind of Snake Eyes logo. But underneath it says G.I. Joe Origins using the same font and logo from this series. And what has been speculated is that this could be the first in a series of movies, if this is popular, to kind of introduce different G.I. Joe characters through origin story solo films and, and then integrate them into kind of like a Marvel Cinematic Universe where then you're seeing all of the characters together in the main G.I. Joe film franchise. We've seen in the past, as silly as this sounds, something as small as a title like The Last Jedi making a book that has nothing to do with the actual film spike into the triple digits. Now, I'm not saying you're going to see triple digits here, but I do think you will get an increased attention because people will be searching on Google, on eBay, everywhere that there is a search platform for G.I. Joe origin, Snake Eyes G.I. Joe origin, since that is the title of the film. And with that search, you're going to get popped up this series. I think the series is going to get increased attention and eyes on it. And the only reason why it's so under the radar, and I've never heard anyone talk about G.I. Joe Origins or the subtitle to the Snake Eyes movie, is simply because the comic market just is always slow reacting to G.I. Joe. So that's one thing that we have tried to do, to be proactive with, again, part of the value of this list is, spotlighting trends that we believe in. We believe in these nostalgia trends. We believe in these 80s and 90s properties, and we're going to keep talking about them. So G.I. Joe Origins is one. If you can grab cover A or cover B, like dollar type thing, if you can grab them cover price or below, I don't think it's a bad buy. Um, and that Dave Dorman variant specifically, which features an amazing painted cover with snake eyes front and center, that's one I would really be on the lookout for. Yeah, everyone likes to be in the Venom world right now or the Noel world right now or the Thor world right now. And we love all those. They all have their place in the comic collection. But that's why we like to bring these type of videos to let people know, hey, there's books that people aren't paying attention to and they're very affordable that might be worth adding to your collection either as a reader, collector, speculator, investor, either way. And it's not a high buy-in. Nope. Hitting us in that four spot this week, we have that Batman number 619, which has some great covers for it as well. That's right, because we are talking the first appearance of Hush. And Hush is certainly a storyline and a character that has a following within Batman fandom, uh, especially Batman fandom of a certain kind of era and age. Um, the, now, 619 has been a book that's, kind of been paid attention to before high print run um this is when like jim lee was getting heavily involved in the batman run um but there are some late printings for this one brian and we've seen what late printings have done in the in the last uh several months where late printings are now getting uh looked at as as desirable as first print specifically because they have lower print runs and usually changed cover art well you're getting two late print variants for this book with different cover art one of which features all of the various DC Comics villains, including a very kind of early Harley Quinn variant cover, Poison Ivy front and center, um, and all of that. And then you're getting another uh, a variant that kind of has like that chessboard kind of really plays into the storyline of what's going on. Uh, look, two awesome variant covers, a, a great regular cover. Uh, this book is cheap and this is a character that I could see being used in the upcoming uh, Batman cinematic um, kind of franchise. And it's only a matter of time. Like you can only do the same villain so long before they're going to have to kind of reach out and look for somebody. New. Then at the next the top spot this week, it, it, is it saying, are, are we on? Hey, hey, what's going on guys? I bet you're wondering why I'm here, but not to worry, you might be going. Hey, we just skipped a spot in this dang video, but not to worry. They noticed it after the fact. They already recorded, but luckily they have Rooster River 
on retainer for things that happen just like this. So I'm coming in and I'm gonna hit you with that number three spot real quick, okay? So at number three, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 654. Why? I'll tell you what, it's that little bubble down there on the bottom right of the corner that has that little venom in there and we get a brand new first appearance of Corporal Flash Thompson as Venom in this book. It's a great one to pick up at your collection. Everyone loves Venom right now, am I right? Am I right? Can I get an amen? They love Venom like I love my pork rinds. So definitely add that to your collection. That's going to be a good one to get. Now, let's get back to Brian and Jack because I know they want to continue the countdown. And you're probably sick of looking at my, my probably sick of looking at my head and my, my, my hair. You guys are just jealous of my hair right now and I know it, but don't worry about it. But that's number three, Amazing Spider-Man, number 654. Pick it up at your collection because Rooster said so. Rooster! Then at the next the top spot this week, we're going back over to those 80 franchises with those Ninja Turtles. We are talking about Turtles in Time number one. This came out uh, a few years back, um, and it, it really was kind of like one of those like almost looked at as silly offshoot Ninja Turtles stories, right? Turtles going back in time. They're in the land of dinosaurs. Um, it was it was done. The art was by it was done. I think written and the art by David Peterson, who is the uh, um, writer and artist of Mouse Guard. And so it has that kind of look and feel. There was also um, variant cover work by uh, Ross Campbell, who is now more commonly known as Sophie Campbell, who is the writer and artist of um, the TMNT series. Now, um, if that whole thing confuses you, I'll let you Google that. But either way, um, not a huge print run. Um, also, there weren't incentives for this book. So all you had was cover A, cover B, and then a Hastings variant. And if you're not familiar with Hastings, Hastings was a big deal in the comic market. They were yeah, it was a, hot for a while. Right. CD, DVD, kind of multimedia company who decided that like comics were going to be a big deal and they got heavily involved in comics. And because they were a chain store and they were ordering so much, it was only natural they were going to produce their own exclusive variants. And they actually produced some hits for a while, but then they went out of business, kind of tanked all their books. And now you're starting to see a lot of those Hastings back issues start to kind of raise up in value as they're some great books. They did a good job designing a lot of their variants and some of their variants are tough to find. So here they were the only ones who did any sort of exclusive for this book. Now, why are we talking about this book? Why am I advocating that this is a book to pay attention to? Well, I said that this was a long overlooked story. It's just a dinosaur story, right? Well, why is a dinosaur story relevant to what we're talking about now? Well, again, I mentioned Sophie Campbell's involvement in this book. And I mentioned the fact that she is now writing the current uh, TMNT series. And if you're reading the current TMNT series, you know that there's an adorable, lovable, small dinosaur named Pepperoni, who is always by the side of Raph or Mikey. And Pepperoni comes from this story. It first appears right here in issue number one, when they are coming back in time. Pepperoni kind of makes the trip with them. And uh, this is an overlooked first appearance because Pepperoni looks to be like a mainstay part of the Splinter Clan, uh, part of the future kind of Ninja Turtles team. And it, I haven't heard a single person talking about this first appearance. This is not an easy book to find. Uh, it's a book that you'll find at times in dollar bins because it's not a book that's valued really either, but not a ton listed online. Um, I don't know if it's not a ton listed online because most have made their way into Turtle Collector's collections or if this was never a book that people saw value in in order to list it online. But I would definitely be on the lookout for this book as you start hitting your LCS again. And, you know, I know there's some local cons popping up. This is a book to keep an eye out for. Again, cover A, cover B, but especially that Hastings. And hitting us at the number one spot this week, we get that classic book This has been talked about, but still kind of undervalued in my opinion. We're talking about Tech Jacket number one. Massively undervalued. And it's massively undervalued because Tech Jacket is a great Robert Kirkman property. But unfortunately, that's not even why I want to talk about this book. Um, it's a great va undervalued Robert Kirkman property. It's a first appearance. We could see a Tech Jacket movie at some point or a Tech Jacket TV show. But what we are going to see is an Invincible television show. And Invincible first appeared right here. There's a preview for Invincible in this book. Now, there's a couple other previews for Invincible, but this is the book that Robert Kirkman himself deems as the first appearance of Invincible. Um, and I think that that should hold more weight than 
it currently does on the market as people kind of look for which of the preview books is the book to go to. To me, this is the clear winner as the book to go to. Invincible is about to be an animated series on uh, the Amazon streaming platform and for Amazon Prime users. Going to be big, huge voice cast, tons of Walking Dead um, alumni, as well as Seth Rogen and numerous, numerous others. Um, it's going to be gritty. It's going to be R-rated. Um, it's going to be violent. I think it's going to catch a lot of people off guard. If you haven't been reading Invincible, it goes places where superhero franchises. Could be like HBO Spawn back in the day. Really could be more modernized because I've tried to rewatch HBO Spawn and it maybe doesn't um, hold up the way that we would hope. But I remember back then, it was the type of thing you were like sneaking in your room and closing the door so your parents didn't hear you watching because sex, violence, drugs, all of that. And I think you're going to see all of that in Invincible. If you never read Invincible, what an amazing story. Um, and I think that it's going to be definitely a big hit on the Amazon platform. So we've been bullish about this when we've been looking for these kinds of uh, books. And we've talked about preview issues previously on these lists. Um, and then this one I like extra because you get a two for it because Tech Jacket also has gone through two volumes. It's a popular character. It's a black superhero. There's a lot of reasons to like Tech Jacket as well. Um, and you kind of get a two for one with this this book. And of course, if you're, you're another again trend that this fits into is Invincible number one is a multi hundred dollar book, low printed. It was totally slept on. Um, it's probably been priced out of a lot of people's ranges. If the series is a hit, it could get hit like Walking Dead type numbers. And if you ever find that book in a bin, you immediately get excited because you think you just found something and you pull it out and you see that Larry's variant printed right on the cover. Um, shout out to frequent commenter uh, and frequent viewer of our live shows, Larry Doherty, um, who you, if you see him in the chat, that is Larry Doherty of Larry's Comics, who was actually the creator of that exclusive. Love Larry, but man, did he print a million of that book. So that I find that one all the time. That's about a 10 to $15 book. Um, and the actual uh, first print cover, which has the same cover minus the word Larry's variant. Um, it, it goes for several hundred. So I would be on the lookout for this tech jacket. Number one, this is not an easy find. You definitely have to do some hunting, but uh, certainly worth the 40 or $50 that um, I've seen it for um, on the secondary market. Yeah, I definitely got some heat when that Invincible was first talked about being picked up for, for animated series, but it's since also dropped back down a little bit more, but either way, there it is, guys. There's another top 10 back issues. And that also wraps up 20 weeks of doing this video. So we are going to have that second volume with another over 100 back issues, the com combined picks that we've discussed in the last 10 weeks. We have that second volume of the ebook up. That first volume, again, is available right now for $1.95 on simplemanscomics.com. You can check that out. It's right there in the top right part of the screen. But stay tuned for volume two as well as some more announcements for some books that we might have coming out. So you want to turn into Two Brothers Comics on YouTube, Burke Family 54 Comics, and we even have some other YouTubers that we're going to be partnering with, right? That's right. Stay tuned for announcements coming from the Comic Jabroni himself um, over at the Comic Jabroni YouTube channel, as well as Cat Ran Figures, the Queen of Horror, is going to be making some announcements for us as well. And of course, our friends over at the Downright Nerdy Podcast have some announcements to drop. Uh, we told you we were going big. We are not playing. And we have increased our size of our Simple Men's Comics family, spreading the love to some other channels. And stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed to all of those channels. We're going to be dropping some cool announcements. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian and Jack from Simple Men's Comics. See you guys in the next video.